Hello everyone, and I hope your Sunday is going well. We do have some wild weather to report. We're going to update you on the radar and what's going on right now. We have concerns with blizzard warnings in portions of the Central Plains, winter storm warnings in the Northern Plains. We're expecting to see some impacts from severe weather tonight in the Central Plains and the Northeast, picking up the pieces after a winter storm slams Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and the Northern reaches of New York. Hundreds of thousands without power. We'll update you on all of that. Let's get started right now with a look at that latest radar from the national perspective and watches and warnings. We have a lot of them. The red counties you see up north, that is a winter storm warning. Minneapolis, St. Paul, a storm system capable of impacting air and road travel, surface travel, disrupting power as well as causing potential risk to livestock as well as our events, a lot of cancellations as well anticipated from Minneapolis through Fargo, Bismarck, all the way out to Northeast Montana, where you see the pink here in the nation's midsection, including much of Southern South Dakota, South of Pier, and Western Nebraska and into Kansas, a blizzard warning has been hoisted by the National Weather Service. The metro area of Denver, not too bad, but we get in and around the foothills south of town, that uh, area around Centennial and points south between there and Colorado Springs on 25, a blizzard warning, all the way into the mountains. We're expecting winter storm conditions there as well. A lot going on. I'm going to turn these off so we could have a look at the latest radar and get started with what we have with regards to the radar right now. There is snow developing and blossoming in the central plains. The low pressure center is now in the central plains and intensifying. As it does so, we're seeing bands of heavier snow set up in northern South Dakota, southern North Dakota, a secondary band in the far north that really isn't amounting to too much. Hi, Julie. I will Welcome all of you, and I hope that you can drop a comment here. Let me know where you're watching from. I love the likes. Subscriptions are welcome as well. Now we can start to see where the impacts from the cold front could cause severe weather tonight. More on that in a minute. Right now, the snow is taking hold in the northern plains and quite impactful. We did have some thunder snow and thunder sleet down near the Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Sioux City, Iowa. That warmer air is moving north, so we're going to have measurable snow topped off by some rain. Oh, it could be a wintry mess. Speaking of Maine and things are exiting there, we have some power outage issues. So let's go right to that. I'm going to turn on the layer here that allows me to show you power outages across the nation. We'll turn on state outages and county outages and well, we'll just turn it all on and go ahead and take a look at this as we head into the afternoon hours. Now, look at all the power outages across the Northeast from this system. Hi, Julie. Good to see you, Kathy, as well. All right. We have warnings continuing across portions of New York, Concordia, and look at the reds that we see here, though. The red areas, the state of Maine has upwards of 200,000 people without power. Let's see if I can lower that so you can read it with me. 176,000 people without power. Most of them are along the coastal part there, but look at that whole state is impacted indeed. Once we get into New Hampshire, Concord, seeing some impacted amounts. Here is that area, uh, 14,000 without power right in that Hillsborough County area. As we look off to the north, uh, many of the counties there seeing impacts. 51,000 without power there. So a lot of power outage concerns. How about New York State? You have them too as we take a look. Let me turn it off and look at just the state level rather than county level. But there are impacts across many, many in the northeastern United States right now. So we'll turn off the county outages here so we can just get the reports on the state. And the New York State outage, 71,000 without power. Primarily, you saw the counties there near Albany and points north. So the storm system as it's exited off into the Atlantic, causing problems there. Well, Texas has a few power outages as well, about 14,000 without power from some stormy McStorms working their way through that neck of the woods. Okay, off with that and on we go to your forecast. We've got a lot to talk about with regard to the national forecast. And to do that, I'm going to turn off of the uh, the power outage details, and we're going to head up and have a look at a forecast model. I'm going to turn off the watches and mornings, and we'll uh, uh, address that here in just a minute. Whoops. I apologize here. I'm having a hard time talking and turning things off at the same time. Here we go. 
All right, thanks for your patience. Now, hi, Albert, good to see you. Watching from Winnipeg, the storm system was gonna stay on the drier side for our friends in parts of Manitoba. The southernmost portion of Manitoba in that province could see some snow and wind from this system. And really, it doesn't really enter portions uh, near Thunder Bay, Ontario, until we get into that Tuesday time frame. the way it looks to me. Good to have you on board. Thank you so much for watching. Hutch's weather. All right, here is a look at the radar. Let's talk about a model now. We're going to look at a, a regional model that will allow us to take a look at some of the impacts from not only the snow, but the thunderstorms as well. So here's our exiting storm system, exiting Halifax and heading up into the North Atlantic. Here's the main event taking place in the Central Plains. That's the one that's going to bring crippling blizzard-like conditions to many in the Northern Plains and winter storm conditions, as well as some icing as we go through, and it will bring a chance for some strong, severe thunderstorms as well. So let's go ahead and uh, pop the timer on on this so you can see what time we're talking about with regards to some of these various weather events. Here we go. Now, as we head through the evening tonight, notice the darker blue colors moving into places like Fargo and the Northern Plains. So the heavier snow from Fargo to Minneapolis will be lifting northward, but on top of the snow in northern Iowa, we're going to see snow first and then changing over to rain and thunder. That's going to be the same thing as we go into Minneapolis. You're looking at two this afternoon. So the snow picks up late on our Sunday, heading into the overnight hours it remains. Things will still be snowing in the western Dakotas, but not as heavy unless you're talking about the enhancement that terrain offers us in and around the Black Hills. You'll see elevated amounts, speaking of elevated terrain, the Rocky Mountains from areas near Cheyenne, Fort Collins, Denver, and points west, all the way south to Santa Fe, going to see some snow impacts from this very same system as well. Heading into the evening hours, here's where we'll have a chance at some of these storms developing, becoming strong in parts of, well, it, we're talking Iowa all the way south, so we could have some of the thunderstorms impacting the central plains. And Kansas, in particular, and Missouri could see some very stout thunderstorm activity. More on that in a minute. Look at the snow take hold. Now you're looking at 4 a.m. as we head into your Monday, and we get this diagonal line from Colorado through Nebraska where we're going to have increasing wind with a band of very heavy snow, snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour, and it's snowing all the way from Sunday night all the way into Monday. This time is in the morning, but look at this. It continues to snow heavily in the same area. Fargo, western Minnesota, parts of northern Minnesota, eastern South Dakota, central Nebraska, western Kansas, Colorado still seeing flakiness in the elevated terrain. That's all the way until your Monday evening. Now, heading into Tuesday, this storm begins to exit. Look at all the rain. And here we have another chance of strong thunderstorms working their way through. Nocturnal thunderstorms could be a possibility in the central and southern plains. More on that, the storm system exits into the Great Lakes. Duluth, this is all the way into your 26th. Folks, that's Tuesday night and into Wednesday. It's still impacting the area. Gusty north wind and some will see well over a foot of snow, two feet of snow possible, and the Pacific Northwest begins the onset of the next storm system. That's the 27th, that's your home day. That's a look at the national picture. Now let's focus on this Northern Plains winter weather event. To do that, I want to highlight a model. We'll go ahead and hop up to a model here. Let's go ahead and put up this model. I'll switch it around a little bit uh, for you if you allow me a little bit of levity to take care of this. Here we go, boom. Shazam. All right, we're going to do a higher resolution model. We'll take a look at the, uh, I'm going to use this one. Now, as we take a look at this particular model, this is an American model. It will go through the period of snow and we're going to zoom into the, well, no, let's leave this more national view. Here goes the storm system working its way through. Tonight, you see parts of Missouri, Iowa, getting a chance for some heavy rain and thunderstorm activity. And again, that is this Sunday night. Heading into the nighttime and hours, we'll see the snow spread across the plains and it continues to work its way through. And here is a timestamp that's important. This is in the evening hours of Tuesday, and you see the storms forming in the boot hill of Missouri, most of eastern Missouri, heading into southern parts of Illinois. Those storms could be very stout, pushing into Kentucky, Tennessee, and the deep south as we work our way through. So keep those things in mind. That's a look at that snow track. Now let's take a look at the snowfall potential from this system in the northern plains. For that, I'm going to pop up a, a graphic here that I've made uh, so that you can get the better details on what we're expecting. This is by Wednesday morning, folks, and I want to highlight that the model's uh, still a couple of days out, so there could be certainly some uh, changes to the exact track of this storm system as the dynamics of the atmosphere are <clears throat> very dynamic. 
here we go. Check this out. Now, as we take a look, and I'll put my uh, picture up here on the other side so you can get a, a, a chance to see this. This is North Dakota, South Dakota, and upwards into central Minnesota. There could be some impacts to the Minneapolis air travel, Fargo air travel points south towards Sioux Falls as well. So most of eastern South Dakota, from Fargo all the way down towards Sioux Falls, central, southern Minnesota, all the way up to the north shore there of the Big Lake. Duluth and points north, very heavy snow. So the bullseye track that I've highlighted here is where we expect the best chance at seeing 8 to 12 and even 16 or more inches of snow. There will be winds gusting to 40 miles per hour, so there will be dangerous travel in the nation's midsection. So that's a look at the snow tracker. Now let's take a look at snow reports from the system that made its way through Maine and elsewhere. The Sierra Nevada picking up snow. We'll get you updated on what's going on nationally. And here we go. This is National Weather Service snow reports that have been turned in. It says North Dakota roads. Please do not uh, follow that as that is not what we're showing here. We're showing a look at those snowfall reports. Check out the Northeast first. We'll zoom into that area. There has been some ridiculous snowfall from New Hampshire and Vermont all the way through Maine and upstate New York. Here is a look closer. Anywhere you see these red dots, we're talking 10 to 20 inches of snow. Read the table on the right. The big winner, West Windsor, Vermont, 33.1 inches. Land Grove, Vermont, 32 inches. Heartland, Vermont, 31 inches. Are you kidding me? That's almost three feet of snow by my calculations and my calculator is slow. Now, now, as we go down into parts of New Hampshire, 28 inches, just to the southeast of Albany, uh, White River Junction, Vermont, 26 inches, so over two feet there. The snowfall amounts were copious, and the wind and the snow causing major power outages in Maine, where if we focus just on Maine, we'll see these totals here. Anywhere on the low side in this area of Fort Fairfield, Maine, 20 inches. We go northward, we have upwards of 29 in East Millinocket. That's fun to say. That's in Maine as well. Other parts of the country hit with some heavier snow bands over the last 24 to 36 hours would include those in the uh, Rockies and the Sierra Nevada. Check out this in portions of Arizona, the Snow Bowl out there. Arizona Snow Bowl reporting 13 inches of snow on the table on the right. Now let's get down to the big area uh, in the uh, Sierra Nevada. So once we get outside of Reno, Lake Tahoe, many reports there of upwards of a foot of snow uh, in the Sierra Nevada from the system working its way through. That does include the Truckee Pass in and around there. We did have some reports of a foot of snow there. So that is a look at snowfall reports. We did have some in the Northern Plains. There, This is not the main event that worked its way through, but look at the Northern Rockies here. A good close to 10 to 12 inches in Hungry Horse, Montana. Utah in the Salt Lake City area. Brighton, Crest, Utah, picking up 14 inches of snow. Now, so far through South Dakota, these reports were as of 9 a.m. today, and we do have some 3 to 5 inch reports as things get cranked up in and around the Dakotas with the main weather event. So that's a look at that. Now I am going to load up a look for you at what we are expecting when it comes to severe weather in the Central Plains. To do that, we're going to take a peek at the Storm Prediction Center, the experts across the nation with their outlooks for the day one forecast. And we're going to take a look at that because we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather. Here it is. We'll put it up on your screen and show you the details of that. You're looking at Kansas, Wichita, Topeka. The green circle is a level one on a five level scale of severe weather. So that's called marginal. We may see a couple storms reach severe weather criteria in those areas. But when we look into central and southern Kansas, basically to the west of you in Wichita, Oklahoma City and points north, you see this circle here. The yellow is a slight risk of severe weather, and that is a level two on the severe weather scale. More widespread strong thunderstorms, hail will be the main threat, gusty straight line winds, and we cannot rule out tornadoes. This area in the middle, Woodward, Dodge City area, well, this is an enhanced risk. We'll take a look at the very latest report from the Storm Prediction Center, but look at the summary. Large hail, damaging wind gusts, and a few tornadoes will be possible in these areas. This low pressure center is creating a lot of shear or spin in the atmosphere uh, from the ground on up, and that shear can be turned into tornadic activity, so we'll keep our eyes on that. If you are in the area of south central Kansas, and well, 
basically northern and western Oklahoma, west of the Oklahoma City area. Pay attention to your forecasts and your skies tonight as things evolve with our storm system. Now, as we take a look at this forecast model, by the way, I'm going to put up a high resolution model on this, and you'll be able to see the timing of the storms tonight. So we'll look at the uh, latest from this high resolution run here. Let's pull it down and let's look at this model run. I like this one a little better. Okay, here we go. So we set this into motion. You're going to see storms firing off, heading into Wichita. This is not the severe expected activity. So from Wichita through Emporia and heading into Kansas City, those are not expected, but you can see the line starting to form here. These isolated early forming storms. And let me see if I can put the clock up here for you so you can get a better idea of the clock on this. Here we go. That timing is 4 p.m. So as we approach the four o'clock hour, we're expecting the initiation of a few thunderstorms west. As they work their way eastward, here we go. This is where they're moving through and toward Lawton, Oklahoma City, Dodge City, and there will be that risk, particularly in the early stages of these storms, of seeing some produce tornadoes. Then, as the event unfolds and moves to the northeast towards Wichita, notice this backwards C-shape to the event. That could be more wind damaging straight line wind and hail potential with the storm system out of here by the late night hours as we go through. But if we follow this through and heading into the overnight hours as we go into your Monday morning, look what's happening down here in Texas and the deep south. There'll be the potential for some stout thunderstorm activity. For this, I would like to look at a model that goes out just a little bit farther as it loads up. Now, there's our activity tonight. Here's the activity in the early morning hours, Dallas and East Texas, all the way up to parts of, here you go, Arkansas, East Texas, southern and eastern and central parts of the state of Missouri and toward the boot hill. All of these storms, even in the morning hours and into the night, could be very strong and they last all the way into the Mississippi Delta, Alabama, and Tennessee. So for tomorrow's severe weather risk, we'll turn on the Storm Prediction Center's analysis of that. And to do that, we'll take a peek at what they have for day two. And there is indeed an enhanced risk in the Jackson area of Mississippi, Monroe in Louisiana, and Natchez, as well as Macomb. So in these areas here where you see this tan circle, that's your enhanced risk. And there will be the risk for severe thunderstorms capable of very large hail, uh, possible for tornadoes, and a few of them could be strong ones. So we'll keep our eyes on that risk. If you're in these areas of the Gulf Coast, please have your uh, weather information ready and we'll keep you updated here on Hutch's Weather. Major storm system plowing its way through the nation, not just today, all the way into Wednesday in the Northern Plains. So several days of snow, it's going to have some serious impacts. Thanks for joining me. If you see, feel so inclined, I love the likes on the video, throw down your subscription. I'd love to see you back and make sure you hit the little dingle bell, ding, ding, ding. So you get an alert when I'm going live and we'll let you know what's going on across the weather, not only in the Northern Plains, which is where I'm from, but across the nation. Have a wonderful weekend and stay stiff upper lip in the northern plains as winter gives us a punch in the face after a very, very quiet and